the dull side of tracing, cloth does not glare. Ink tracings are made from pencil drawings. The centers of opposite edges of the cloth should be attached to the drawing board in pairs. followed by the attachment of the opposite corners in pairs. With the tracing cloth thus tightly in place, the making of an accurate tracing is quite easy. Drafting tape offers less interference than thumbtacks to the use of T-square and triangles. Tracing cloth powder thoroughly rubbed into the cloth will ensure the cloth taking the ink. A felt pad or a cloth should be used to apply the powder. The surplus should be brushed off and the tracing cloth wiped thoroughly with a clean cloth to prevent excess powder from clogging the pen. Drawing ink is a solution of finely divided carbon with waterproofing added to prevent lines running if moistened accidentally. The stopper may be easily removed from a new bottle of ink by twisting it out. Subsequent opening of the bottle may be done with one hand by holding the bottle between the second and third fingers and twisting out the stopper with the thumb and first finger. The dropper attached to the stopper is for filling the pen. The pen in one hand and the stopper in the other are steadied by touching the little fingers together. Not more than one-fourth of an inch of ink should be put in the pen on account of danger of blots. Putting too much ink in the pen is asking for trouble. Blots and other mistakes are smeared and allowed to dry before erasing. The inside nib of a good ruling pen is curved enough to keep the line away from the guiding straight edge. The width of the line is governed by the distance between the nibs. Turning the adjusting screw with a thumb and forefinger changes the width of the line by changing the distance between the nibs. A guiding straight edge and tracing material should be used for test lines. The setting of the pen is measured by measuring a line drawn with the setting. A line gauge is a convenient means for making the measurement. When the ruling pen is used, the adjusting screw is away from the guiding straight edge. The pen is held in a plane perpendicular to the drawing board and inclined to about 60 degrees in the direction the line is being drawn. For each dash of a broken line, the pen is brought to a complete stop and lifted from the tracing. Ink lines on a tracing should be centered over the lines of the drawing. The pivot points of the bow pen and the compasses should have shoulders to prevent large holes in the tracing. The pivot points should be slightly longer than the nibs of the pens. The diameters of the pivot points of most bow pens is smaller than the pivot point of compasses. For concentric circles, the bow pen should be used before the compasses. Drawing pens must be kept clean at all times for satisfactory work. Cleaning before readjustment or refilling prevents the ink from gelling in the pen. Folding a corner on the wiping cloth permits drawing the cloth between the nibs without disturbing the setting of the pen. To ensure accurate tangencies between two arcs, the center of the second arc is located accurately in pencil before drawing the arc in ink. The point of tangency between two arcs lies on a line through the centers of the arcs. Both nibs of the pen are made to touch the tracing cloth by bending the knuckle joints so that the legs are perpendicular to the tracing cloth.
to join a straight line to an arc, align the nibs carefully with the arc before touching the pen to the tracing cloth. When an interruption occurs, the pen should be wiped clean at once to prevent the ink from drying in the pen and to be sure of having the pen ready for use when the interruption is gone. The pen may be cleaned without changing the setting by folding a corner on the wiping cloth and drawing it between the nibs. Ink spots on the outside of the nibs should be removed at the same time. Because the pen was wiped clean before stopping, refilling permits tracing to continue. To make an accurate tracing, indent all centers and mark all points of tangency with pencil before starting to ink. Aligning the needle point carefully with the center lines will ensure accurate location of the indentations. The point of tangency of a straight line and a circle lies on a perpendicular to the tangent through the center of the circle. For concentric circles, those made with the bow pen are drawn first, lest the pivot point of the bow pen shift around in the larger hole made by the pivot point of the compasses. Circle arcs are drawn after complete circles have been inked. Arcs of long radius follow those of shorter radius. Straight lines follow curved lines. Horizontal lines are ruled from left to right, beginning at the top. Vertical lines follow horizontal lines. Vertical lines are ruled from bottom to top, beginning at the left. Inclined lines follow vertical lines. Note how the alignment of the triangle is checked to ensure accurate tangencies. The use of two triangles simplifies the drawing of parallel lines. For efficient tracing, the order in which the lines are inked is important. All lines of a given width and drawn with a given instrument are inked with a single setting of the pen. The next section of this film will demonstrate the complete order of inking. Visible circles and circle arcs with a bow pen are inked first, starting with the smallest and working from left to right and from top to bottom. All curves of the same radius are completed before changing the bow pen to a different radius.
Hidden circles and circle arcs with a bow pen are inked after visible circles and circle arcs with a bow pen have been completed. Auxiliary circles and circle arcs with a bow pen, such as bolt circles or dimension lines for angles, are inked after hidden circles and circle arcs with a bow pen have been completed. Visible circles and circle arcs with the compasses follow auxiliary circles and circle arcs with a bow pen. Hidden circles and circle arcs with the compasses follow visible circles and circle arcs with the compasses. Auxiliary circles and circle arcs with the compasses, such as bolt circles and dimension lines for angles, follow hidden circles and circle arcs with the compasses. Non-circular visible curved lines follow auxiliary lines with the compasses and are drawn with the ruling pen and the irregular curve. Note how the curve is reversed so that the halves of the curve will be symmetrical. Horizontal visible straight lines follow non-circular visible curves and are drawn with a ruling pen and T-square. Horizontal lines are ruled from left to right beginning at the top. By being careful to ink each visible line segment as it appears, once over the drawing takes care of all the horizontal visible lines. Vertical visible straight lines follow horizontal visible straight lines and are drawn with a T-square, triangle, and ruling pen. Visible lines are made about one fortieth of an inch wide. Vertical lines are ruled from bottom to top, beginning at the left. Here again, by being careful to ink each visible segment as it appears, once across the drawing takes care of all the visible vertical lines. Inclined visible lines follow vertical visible lines and are drawn with a ruling pen. 
Inclined lines are ruled from left to right and down. Or up in the direction of the slope of the line. Non-circular hidden curves follow visible straight lines and are drawn to the ruling pen and the irregular curve. Once more, reversing the irregular curve keeps the figure symmetrical. Horizontal hidden straight lines follow non-circular hidden curves and are drawn with the ruling pen and the T-square. Hidden lines consist of one eighth inch dashes and one sixteenth inch spaces. Hidden lines are about one sixtieth of an inch wide. Vertical hidden straight lines follow horizontal hidden straight lines and are drawn with the ruling pen, triangle, and T-square. Inclined hidden straight lines follow vertical hidden straight lines. Horizontal auxiliary straight lines follow inclined hidden straight lines including the short horizontal segment at the beginning of each leader, auxiliary lines comprise extension lines, center lines, dimension lines, section lines, and leaders. Extension lines are one one hundred fiftieth of an inch wide. They start one sixteenth of an inch from the view and extend one eighth of an inch beyond the dimension line. Center lines are one one hundred fiftieth of an inch wide. They consist of alternate long and short dashes. Long dashes are from three-fourths of an inch to one and one-half inches long. Short dashes are one-eighth of an inch long. Dashes are separated by spaces one-sixteenth of an inch long. A dimension line is one one hundred fiftieth of an inch wide. The short horizontal segment at the beginning of each leader is included with the other horizontal auxiliary lines. By being careful to trace each horizontal auxiliary segment as it appears, once over the drawing takes care of all horizontal auxiliary lines.
Vertical auxiliary lines are traced after the horizontal auxiliary lines have been completed. By being careful to trace each vertical auxiliary line segment as it appears, once across the drawing takes care of all vertical auxiliary lines. Inclined auxiliary lines are ruled after vertical auxiliary lines have been completed. The sloping segments of leaders are drawn after the other inclined auxiliary lines except section lines have been traced. Leaders are one one hundred fiftieth of an inch wide like all other auxiliary lines. Section lines are ruled after the leaders have been traced. Although section lines usually slope at 45 degrees, on this drawing they make 60 degrees with a horizontal to avoid parallelism with object lines in the sectional view. If a section line is separated into segments by holes on the cutting plane, the segments of the line are traced with a single setting of the triangle. Section lines are one one hundred fiftieth of an inch wide. Some tracers may prefer to ink border lines first. For this tracing, they are inked last. A special border line pen is used because it uses less ink, so there is less danger of blots. In use, the pen is perpendicular to the tracing, and the nibs are at right angles to the straight edge. The nibs are split so that the part away from the straight edge is as wide as the required line. The inside of the back or guiding nib is shortened, and the front nib is cut away to keep the ink from running under the straight edge. The pen is filled from the outside of the nibs. The space between the nibs is adjusted to make the line dry a short distance behind the pen. Border lines are about one thirtieth of an inch wide. A soft, sharp pencil and a lettering triangle permit guidelines to be drawn on the tracing cloth quickly and accurately. The guideline for locating the fraction bar is drawn through the second hole in column six. The guideline for the top of numerals is drawn through the third hole in column six. The guideline for the bottom of numerals is drawn with the second hole in column three. Guidelines for the numerators of fractions are drawn with the holes four and six of column three. The guidelines for denominators of fractions are drawn with holes one and three of column three. Marking the seven holes with drawing ink makes them easy to find. Inclined guidelines help to keep the slope of the characters uniform. Better lettering can be done if the tracing cloth is pressed down against the drawing. It is usually better not to trace the lettering of the drawing. 
The lettering pen should be filled on the inside only at the slot using a dropper from the ink bottle. A dry tip will assure uniform width of strokes for the lettering. Lettering the arrows and the dimension which they define as a single combined operation will avoid confusing omissions. The lettering pen should be held easily with the fingers relaxed and only a light uniform pressure, too light to spread the nibs of the pen should be used. After the tracing is completed, the pencil guidelines may be removed with carbon tetrachloride or any other non-inflammable dry cleaning fluid. The ruling pen is never used freehand, but is always guided by a ruling edge. Excessive pressure of the pen against a straight edge will produce a line of varying width. Changing the inclination of the pen changes the width of the line and makes a curve instead of a straight line. Leaning the pen toward the straight edge as the line is drawn produces a curve instead of a straight line. Leaning the pen away from the straight edge permits the ink to run under it. Smearing makes erasing easier because the ink dries in a very thin layer. Use only a pencil eraser on tracing cloth because an ink eraser will damage the surface. Note how much easier the blot erases where the ink was smeared. To avoid accidents, the guiding edge should be moved back promptly and carefully from a freshly drawn line. When correcting an error, the use of an erasing shield will protect the rest of the tracing. An erasing machine is effective for removing drawing ink. It must be applied intermittently to avoid overheating the rubber and causing smears. The dirt produced by erasing must be thoroughly brushed away to avoid clogging the pen and causing more trouble. The use of improper methods of erasing damages the surface of the tracing cloth causing the ink to spread and make a rough line. Rubbing the eraser with a soapstone will make the cloth take the ink properly. Should the pen lack ink to complete a line, stop before the ink runs out and leave a gap when finishing the line. The gap may be filled by setting the pen for a finer line and ruling three times, first with one nib of the pen on one edge of the line, then with the other nib on the other edge of the line, and finally filling in the space between, allowing each segment to dry before drawing the next. The nibs of a properly sharpened ruling pen are elliptical. The space between them decreases gradually toward the tips and the edges of the tips are sharp. When viewed from the end, no bright spots can be seen. Such a pen makes a line whose width is equal to the distance between the nibs. If bright spots can be seen when the pen is viewed from the end, the nibs are thick. and the width of the line will vary from the distance between the nibs to the distance outside the nibs. The bright spots on the end of the pen may be due to wear from use. Here also the width of the line will vary from the distance between the nibs to the distance outside the nibs. Specks of ink on the outside of the nibs produce the same results as thick nibs or dull ones. The specks may be removed by rubbing the outside of each nib on a piece of drawing paper. To sharpen a drawing pen, the nibs are first brought together and shaped elliptically on a hard Arkansas oil stone.
Then the nibs are separated. And each nib is sharpened on the outside. until the little bright spots on the ends of the nibs disappear. When the shape of the nibs is pointed, the line will not start because the ink forms an arch and will not touch the tracing. If the nibs are sharpened on the inside, the space between the nibs will be bell mouthed, and the line will not start because the ink forms an arch and will not touch the tracing.